Welcome to the Merton Heritage Alphabet, an A to Z of our borough's colourful past. Our next letter V is for Victoria Cross. The VC is the highest military honour that can be awarded to any serviceman or woman in the British or Commonwealth forces. Awarded solely for valour in the face of the enemy, it is also the most egalitarian award in the British honours system, issued regardless of race, age or rank. Prior to the Crimean War, there was no military honour available to all servicemen, regardless of rank or service. The newspaper reports and images produced by journalist William Russell brought home to the British public the extraordinary gallantry of the British soldier, resulting in Parliament's decision to institute the Victoria Cross. In a speech at the state opening of Parliament in 1854, the Queen paid tribute to the soldiers of her unconquerable army, expressing her admiration and gratitude to them. As a result, in December that year, Captain G.T. Scobell MP asked the House of Commons that a humble address be presented to Her Majesty to institute an order of merit to be bestowed upon persons serving in the army or navy for distinguished and prominent personal gallantry during the present war and to which every grade and individual may be admissible. In March 1855, the Prime Minister Lord Palmerston confirmed the decision to establish an order of that description. From that point onwards, the Queen was closely involved with the project, viewing all the medal designs forwarded by the Secretary of War, Lord Panmure. On January the 5th, 1856, she approved the final cross on the proviso that the medal motto should be altered to For Valour. It was finally instituted by Royal Warrant on the 29th of January, 1855. It has often been said that Queen Victoria's German husband designed the VC. However, there are no surviving documents to prove this. Certainly the Prince Consort was much involved in the decision to institute the medal. However, it is likely that the manufacturers, Hancock's Jewellers Limited, were responsible for the final design. The central feature of the medal is the royal crown, topped by a lion. Below this is a ribbon bearing the motto for valour. The reverse of each medal is unique as it is engraved with the recipient's name, regiment and the date of the action for which the award was made. The reverse of the bar also carries the individual's name, rank and serial number. Jeweller Charles Frederick Hancock was a partner in the firm Store and Mart at Mortimer before opening his own shop on the corner of Bruton Street and New Bond Street, London in 1849. Granted the royal appointment of Her Majesty Queen Victoria soon afterwards, his reputation grew and he became the jeweller of choice for many of the European monarchs. In March 1856, Hancock was entrusted with the design and production of the Victoria Cross. The medal is still made exclusively by Hancock's and Co. Now based in Burlington Arcade, the firm has made every one of the 1,355 medals issued to date. Each Victoria Cross is unique because unlike other medals, it is cast rather than struck. Four medals at a time are sand cast in moulds, then hand finished when cool. Both faces of the medal are manually engraved before a bronze coating is applied for even colouring and the suspender bar is produced in the same way. All Victoria crosses are made from the melted down breaches of two Russian cannon captured at the Crimean Battle of Sebastopol. The bronze is actually Chinese in origin and the surviving ingot is stored at the Ministry of Defence Central Ordnance Depot at Donington in Shropshire. During the Great War, metal from Chinese guns captured during the Boxer Rebellion of 1899-1901 was also used to manufacture additional medals. The 1856 warrant stated that the ribbon colour for the cross should be red for the army and blue for the navy. Following the formation of the Royal Air Force in April 1918, the blue ribbon was abolished in favour of one red coloured ribbon for use by all the services. In 1902, Edward II decreed that posthumous awards should be made for those killed during the Boer War. In 1907, this decree was extended to those who had won the VC prior to that date, so allowing the next of kin to receive the medal on behalf of the deceased. There are at least 16 men with Merton associations who have been awarded the VC. A number were born here, some chose to live in the area during their adult life, while others were laid to rest in Merton cemeteries. They range from a draper's assistant and a garden labourer's son to an English rugby player, a scoutmaster and sons of the gentry. Despite their different backgrounds and experiences, they all have one thing in common. In the face of extreme danger, they all responded with valour, ordinary men performing extraordinary feats in difficult circumstances. For the purposes of this film, I'm going to focus on one particular medal recipient. John Henry Stephen Dimmer, known as Jack, was born at 37 Gloucester Road, Lambeth on the 9th of October, 1883. 
He was one of four sons born to rail, a railway man and former Royal Navy serviceman John Dimmer and his wife Ellen. By 1908, the family was living at Herbert Cottages, Herbert Road, Wimbledon. They later moved to 55A Griffiths Road, by which stage Jack's father seems to have died. Jack was educated at Merton Church School until 1896, when he secured a Surrey County Council scholarship to attend the new Rutledge Science School on Kingston Road, Merton Park. Here he studied a wide range of subjects from English grammar and mathematics to French, German, shorthand, drawing, history and woodwork. The school also placed emphasis on drill, which may have had some bearing on Jack's enthusiasm for the military, and he was part of the school's cadet corps. At the age of 16, Jack considered a career in civil engineering before starting work at the surveying offices of H.R. Parson on Queen Victoria Street, London. He wanted to join the army, but was initially rejected due to his small stature. Despite this initial setback, Jack's enthusiasm for the military was undiminished. In 1901, having requested a half-day holiday from work, he joined the 1st Cadet Battalion King's Royal Rifle Corps, also known as the Barnet Militia. By the age of 17, he had been promoted to the rank of Sergeant. Having completed his cadet's training, Jack returned to Wimbledon and for a brief period worked at the surveying offices of auctioneers Messrs Ogden, Sons and Ollie on Wimbledon Broadway was unable to settle by July 1902, he enlisted in the Army Regulars and was posted to Cork with the 7th Battalion King's Royal Rifle Corps. He was then promoted to the rank of Lance Corporal. In 1902, Dimmer was posted to South Africa with the 4th Battalion King's Royal Rifles and promoted to Corporal for his reconnaissance work in the Orange River Colony. He now spent several months with the Mounted Infantry at Salisbury Plain and was again complimented for the quality of his military draftsmanship. His skill was such that in 1905 he was appointed to instruct the non-commissioned officers and in December his work as an infantry scout and signaller secured him a further promotion to Lance Sergeant. In January 1906 Dimmer sought to learn more about the military methods used in Belgium and France. He paid his own fare to visit the battlefields of Waterloo before travelling to Cologne where he studied German army tactics. On his return to England Jack joined the school for signalling qualifying as an assistant instructor and later instructor to army cadets at Aldershot. In November, he began studying engineering tactics, topography, military law and organisation with a view to securing a captaincy. Having successfully qualified with a first class army certificate, averaging a 75% score in all subjects, Dimmer was recommended for a commission. Rather mysteriously, he was now employed on intelligence work in an unspecified country. His mission is said to have been a risky one and he was ultimately forced to flee the country concerned. In 1908, Lord Methuen, commanding officer of the British forces, interviewed Jack and recommended him for an officer's commission. Initially, the request was refused, largely due to resistance amongst the upper ranks. However, at the insistence of Secretary of State for War Lord Haldane, the military authorities were forced to relent. Known as the most aristocratic regiment in the British Army, the King's Royal Rifle Corps was traditionally commanded by the Sons of Gentlemen. Now a second lieutenant in the 7th Battalion, Dimmer was the first ranker officer in the regiment's history. Between 1908 and 1914, Dimmer served with the West African Regiment, carrying out special duties on behalf of the Colonial Office. War was declared shortly after his return on leave. Jack immediately rejoined the 2nd Battalion King's Royal Rifle Corps and left for France with the British Expeditionary Force. Life on the Western Front was dangerous from the outset and Dimmer's family were anxious to hear that his duties principally consisted of galloping between the guns and lines of defence, which was a very risky business. On the 10th of November 1914, Dimmer's unit entered the line of Klein Zilbeck in Belgium. By this stage, he was in command of a Vickers machine gun section. The region had seen heavy fighting for over a month and the no man's land between the opposing armies was littered with shell holes and unburied bodies. On the 12th of November, Jack performed the act of valour for which he was later awarded the Victoria Cross. The following notice was printed in the London Gazette, an official government publication. Lieutenant J.H.S. Dimmer, King's Royal Rifle Corps, 1914, Belgium. On November the 12th, 1914, the 2nd Battalion was holding a section of trenches at Klein Zilbeck. Lieutenant Dimmer was in charge of the machine gun section. About noon, there was a very heavy artillery bombardment, followed by an attack en masse by the Prussian Guard, supported by violent machine gun fire. 
almost all of the machine get gun section were hit and Lieutenant Dimmer continued firing one gun single-handed. Twice he had to leave his emplacement to remedy stoppages, which he did successfully, but each time he was wounded. He was wounded a third time by shrapnel, but continued firing his gun and inflicting enormous casualties on the serried German masses who continued to advance within 50 yards of our trenches. Then they suddenly broke and ran, but Lieutenant Dimmer was wounded again by the German artillery covering the retreat. However, he, ins he insisted in spite of his wounds in reporting personally to brigade headquarters. Descent Despite numerous wounds, Dimmer miraculously survived. It was while recuperating at Lady Rosslyn's hospital in Boulogne that he learned of his award. He was later evacuated to England to recuperate and was sent to South End. During this time, the town was bombed by German zeppelins, prompting locals to attack German-owned shops. It is a mark of Dimmer's authority that he was able to control the situation and persuade the hostile crowd to disperse, although he was single-handed. On January the 1915, Jack was promoted to the rank of captain. On the 1st of January, he was awarded the Military Cross for his actions in the latter part of 1914. The people of Wimbledon were immensely proud of their VC, and the local corporation recommended that Dimmer should be granted the freedom of the borough. He wrote back with typical modesty, I note that the town council desire to confer upon me the freedom of the borough. Whilst appreciating the great honour, I beg to decline the same. Too much publicity has been given to my name already, and has caused me a great deal of worry and annoyance. To accept the freedom would only bring further publicity, and such is not in accordance with the conditions of the service. Shortly after receiving the Victoria Cross, Jack was promoted to the rank of Brigadier Major in the 92nd Infantry Brigade and received further commendation for his, for his bravery. In 1916, having relinquished his staff appointment, he joined the 3rd Battalion in Salonika, where he became a Brigade Machine Gunner to the 10th Division. Despite contracting malaria, Jack refused to return home and opted to join the Salonika Flying Corps, where he qualified as an observer. After this, his health deteriorated again and he was sent back to England. In February 1917, Jack rejoined the 2nd Battalion King's Royal Rifles, but was again invalided following a bout of septic poisoning. Once recovered, he was appointed to command the 2nd 4th Battalion Royal Berkshire Regiment. On the 19th of January 1918, Jack married Dora Bailey Parker in Moseley, Birmingham. Her family owned the famous Axminster Carpet Company. The couple now bought a house in Wilton Grove, Merton Park. On the 21st of March 1918, Dimmer led his battalion into action near Martyville, not far from San Quentin. The Germans were mounting a last ditch offensive and it was important to halt their advance. Dimmer was determined to lead the attack on horseback in order to give confidence to his men. Despite the repeated pleas of his fellow officers, he refused to dismount prior to the main charge. A clear target on his white horse, he was shot in the head whilst issuing orders to his troops. He was 34 years old and had been married just two months. Jack was subsequently awarded a posthumous mention in dispatches for his gallantry. The Germans buried him where he fell. However, his body was later recovered by British forces and interred at the Varden Court British Cemetery in France. His widow later married Lord Leonard Canning, 4th Baron Garver. Following Jack's death, William Ca Wimbledon Council erected a plaque in his memory. A committee was established and there were discussions on how to proceed, but no further action was taken. In 1985, at a special ceremony attended by Dimmer's surviving nieces and nephews, a plaque was unveiled at Merton Civic Centre where it can still be seen today. Jack is also commemorated on the King's Royal Rifle Corps Memorial at Winchester Cathedral and the Kingston Vale War Memorial. His medals are held at the Royal Green Jackets Museum. And in November 19, 2014, a special commemorative paving stone was installed on Jubilee Walk Lambeth near the River Thames to mark 100 years since the Act of Valour for which Jack had been awarded the Victoria Cross. If you would like to know more about Merton's heritage, visit our Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories. You can also find more information at Merton Heritage and Local Studies Centre, which is located on the second floor of Morden Library. <laughs>